Good evening, everyone, and thank you for your patience on this rainy night. Uh, I apologize, but our closed session ran a little late this evening. But while we were in there, we did call the meeting to order so we can get started now with our student representative reports. Annabelle, I'm from High School South. Um, so first, High School South ranked 88th in the nation by Newsweek for best high school STEM schools. Um, at South, the orchestra, band, and choirs all held their winter concerts. In terms of sports, the boys' soccer won their first state playoff game in over 10 years, um, a victory over Monroe. The girls' cross-country team won the Group 4 sectional championship, and the boys' cross-country team won the Group 4 Central Jersey sectional championship and finished ninth in the state in the meet of champions. Girls' volleyball earned the ninth seed in the, in the state tournament um, and won their first round state game. All players will return since there were no seniors on the team this year. And we are looking forward to winter sports and their winter spirit week, which is this week, um, and our winter sports pep rally, which is on January 17th. Finally, South drama, South's fall drama, Moon Over Buffalo, was a success, and the theater program is excited to begin its musical called Guys and Dolls. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sonia Manloy, and I'm a senior at High School North. Winter season has kicked off to an amazing start. Our swimmers are holding strong this winter with an undefeated season thus far. We are so excited to see what's in store for all our athletes. Although we have started the track season, we wanted to recognize two senior athletes who are now all state for cross country, Luke Johnson and Kalia Cordasco. Can't, can't wait to see what they'll accomplish this track season. The Red Cross School Club will be hosting their blood drive this Thursday during school. Also on Thursday, the High School North a cappella group is hosting a holiday concert from 7.30 to 9.30 in the theater. To add, two weekends ago, the High School North Model Congress team won the best small delegation at the Yale Conference. Overall, the 2019 school year has been a blast. Happy holidays and happy new year. Thank you very much. Have a nice, safe break. We'll see you next year. That brings us to our first opportunity for public comment. The board invites thoughts and reactions on agenda items and items of concern from members of the community who are present. Each participant is asked to give his or her name and address prior to making a statement, which will be limited to three minutes. All statements shall be made to the presiding officer, and this public comment period shall be limited to 60 minutes. I'm just going to ask anybody who makes a comment to please speak very close to the mic. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ravi Sadaraju. I, I live at uh, Nine Cliff View Court in um, West Windsor. Um, I want to speak to you tonight about an issue that I think is important. Um, I've been in contact with the administration about it, but you're our elected officials and you provide oversight to the district. So in that capacity, I think this issue should be brought to your attention as well because there's an area of our district that I think needs direct oversight by this body, and that's the issue of um, our athletic issues that have come up regarding our athletic program. Um, I'm not talking about issues of quality, or I'm not talking about issues of, of whether we're winning or not. Um, I'm raising issues of basic student safety. Um, people are being put in positions for coaching with, for which they have absolutely zero qualification. I want to give you a little bit of background about myself and tell you about, before I tell you about what happened. I helped run the, the West Windsor Youth Wrestling Program for about seven or eight years. I was also a volunteer wrestling coach at CMS. In all those years, we never had a kid leave a practice um, to have to go to the hospital. My son has been on the, on the North Wrestling team for two weeks, and, he was and on Saturday morning, he was taken out by, by, in an ambulance on a stretcher. This can't go on. We, there was an opening for a, a North Wrestling coach earlier this year, and instead of finding someone who was qualified for the position, a coach was put in who had absolutely no wrestling experience, never wrestled, never coached it before, and this young, this person who they put in is a good person. He's a fine young, per he's a fine person, I'm not trying to hurt his career, but he was put in a very, very unfair and inappropriate situation, because he was asked to do something for which he was, he was, not, he was not qualified. This issue was raised with, with our, our athletic director before. People said, is this going to be okay? Are we going to be all right here? Is this, our, is this going to be okay? On a lot of different levels from performance to instruction to safety, and we were assured that it would be. 
some people had their doubts, and our doubts have been proven right. Two weeks into the season, we had someone go to the hospital. I, my, I wasn't in town. My wife took pictures of the room, and the way the mats were laid out were not, was not safe. There was, a, there was a dangerous gap between the edge of the mat and a padded wall that the average kid would not notice would make them stop, and my son struck his head in this gap. I showed this picture to, I'm an attorney, I showed this picture to two top premises liability lawyers who said that it was absolutely unsafe. I showed it to about three guys I coach wrestling with who said that, you could, that, that it was unsafe. And one of the things you do as a wrestling coach is you walk around the room and you make sure that kids aren't wrestling near the edge or anywhere where they could be unsafe. You're, help, you're helping to corral the room. That's something you could say 10 times a day when you're coaching, on a, on a given night when you're coaching. So we have a problem here. And you, as this body, you need, you need to do something about it. There's an ongoing, this is an ongoing risk. It's, this was an incident where someone, there was an unsafe layout of the mat, someone hit their head. But wrestling is a sport that can be very safe. I've, I've been trying to recruit people to wrestle for years. And people say, well, is it safe? I say, yes, it is. But you have to have coaches who know what they're doing. Because the difference between a, a, a move done safely and a move, and a move done unsafely can be very important. You, excuse me, your, your three minutes has expired, so I just need you to finish up, please. Okay, I will. In a second. Thank you. This is, okay. This is an important issue. Something needs to be done about it. And we, I want to be part of the problem. I've, I've, I've been in touch with Dr. Adderhold and Dr. Dauber. Um, I want to thank them. Dr. Dauber saw me and spent an hour with me the next morning to help come with solutions. But they can't be playing catch-up. This has to be, things have to get better in terms of staffing and safety before, before it's being done. And I suggest that this, group ha that this group institute an athletic oversight committee to make sure that changes are being made. We were on the athletic Thanks. task force. People made a lot of suggestions and recommendations. I don't think any of them have been done. So things, ne things need to get better. Things need to change. Thank you. Is there anyone else? So we'll close the public comment section now and we'll move on to our committee reports. We'll begin with Tony Flores who will give us the administration and facilities report. You know, we met on um, December 10th. <coughs> uh, we reviewed uh, two policies, uh, parent organization and media relations. Uh, they're on the agenda for the first reading. <coughs> And uh, again, if you have any comments after you've read them, uh, please get back to me or uh, uh, James Earl. We also reviewed a draft of the 2021-2022 calendar, and uh, it's going to be reviewed now by the, uh, for input by the district staff. We touched on referendum updates. The fire alarm projects at uh, Maurice Hawkins Town Center are complete and inspected while Village is still underway. Generators arrived for the Millstone River Elementary, Village Elementary, and Community Middle School and are currently being installed. Uh, bidding for the HVAC upgrades at North Millstone River and Wyckoff is set pending a private, uh, pending final approval from the NJDOE. The uh, drawings for the security vestibule, vestibules and toilet rooms at Dutch Neck, Wyckoff, Millstone River, Village, Grover, Town Center, and uh, High School North are nearing completion. And final design meetings are being, are being held uh, with the building staff and administration. Survey work for the media center renovations is complete, and the initial design, meetings, uh, design meeting has been held with the building staff at Millstone River. Uh, at Millstone River Village, Dutch Neck for phase one. Uh, the additional, the addition project at Grover Middle School is underway with the contractor to start mobilization uh, this week. Uh, regular construction meetings are gonna be held with the contractor at Grover and bidding for, community, for the community project is pending final approval with the DOE. Uh, concerning equity update, the committee reviewed a draft of the 2019-2020 equity goals and discussed the proposed high leverage goal that would have the greatest impact on the district and school buildings. District administrators will meet with neighboring superintendents on Friday, 
Oh, they have met. Oh, well, on Tuesday it was in the future. They met last Friday on the 13th to, con to continue developing uh, equity goals and plans for implementation. The committee also reviewed two new job descriptions, uh, senior computer support specialist and communication support specialist, and they're on the agenda for approval tonight. <clears throat> Concerning security, the, poli the Plainsboro Police Department hired the final class three officer to serve as the floater for the, all of the Plainsboro schools. The officer will begin support building, uh, supporting the buildings in January. Uh, the committee reviewed the NJSIAA Cooperative Sports Program application for renewal for fall sports, which is football for us. Uh, both high school principals, the district athletic director, and the assistant superintendent will complete the renewal for submission in January. Uh, then we had a joint meeting with the uh, finance committee and, and met with representatives from Schneider Electric uh, for any final questions, uh, and we had a presentation from them on the ESA program. And uh, we'll let Louisa talk about that when she gets into the finance one. Uh, our next meeting is on January 21st. Any questions? I'll turn it over to Dana Krug for the curriculum report. Um, the curriculum committee also met on December 10th. And first, we recommend the approval of the 2020-21 high school program of studies as it was outlined at our last board meeting. Next, the committee recommends approval of the two dance curricula for sixth through eighth grades and ninth through 12th grades for future, for future courses. These courses are not currently offered, and this is a curricula that had to be designed as part of the CUSAC requirements. The committee also recommends for approval two professional development consultants one is from um, High Tops to provide a one-day workshop um, that is for uh, on the topic of sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression at a cost not to exceed $225, and um, an organization called PL Yoga Fitness to provide a one-day certification workshop titled Your Body is Power at a cost not to exceed um, $3,490. And also two pro additional professional development opportunities for staff, three staff members to attend the mid the mid school math conference in March in New Mexico at a cost not to exceed six hundred forty five dollars per person, plus travel, um, partial reimbursement through um, the WWPEA and WWPAA contracts, and one district administrator to attend the World Congress on Special Needs Education in December. Uh, 2019 in London at a uh, cost not to exceed $400 plus travel, partial reimbursement from the um, per the sorry per the WWP AAA contract. The committee also recommends approval of the disposal of several obsolete items, um, two upright pianos, a little over 2,000 books from High School North's Media Center, um, uh, 1,134 books from Community Middle School Media Center. 941 books from Village School Media Center, 797 books from Maurice Hawk Mil um, Media Center, and 220 books from Millstone. Um, this is in, all in, in accordance with uh, regulations because all of these items meet one or more of the criteria that they are so worn or damaged as to preclude effective use and economical repair or restoration, or they are so outdated as to no longer serve as worthy instructional tools. The committee also recommends approval of the overnight field trip for High School South band and orchestra students to go to Italy in February of 2021 for an, an approximate cost of um, $2,500 per student. And the committee will next meet on Tuesday, January 21st. Are there any questions for curriculum? All right, it's time for uh, finance in Louisa Hope. Okay, the committee met on December 10th. We've reviewed the items on the agenda for approval. We also reviewed um, budget and financial reports for the district, and our current status is very similar to last year, um, so we're doing fine at this point in the year. Um, we will sell solar renewable energy credits in January. We do that twice a year, and these are the energy credits from the solar panels at North and South. 
the administration uh, gave us a brief update on the creation of the 2020-21 budget, and there is a budget retreat uh, scheduled for tomorrow. Snyder also came and presented the status on the Energy Savings Improvement Program. They reviewed the projects included in the scope of work, which includes projects to improve energy efficiency as well as projects to improve the infrastructures in the school. The majority of savings that will finance the infrastructure work comes from the installation of LED lighting throughout the district as well as the power purchase agreement for um, solar panels that will reduce our um, energy costs. As some of the infrastructure projects, there will be new HVAC installed in a portion of South as well as Dutch Neck School. The project also includes an integrated building automation system as well as other energy saving projects. Um, work continues at Maurice Hawk, but it is not going well. Uh, the town center project is nearing completion with work being completed on casework and the storefront glass. The generator work is being completed with delivery expected for the ones at Community and Grover. New generators at Millstone and Village are up and running and meetings have started for the expansion at Grover Middle School with work to start over winter break. The state controller's office is completing their review of the plans for the community middle school expansion and the HVAC work at High School North and Millstone River. Uh, for the cafeteria, the committee reviewed the report provided by the manager of food services containing the financials and cafeteria activities for the month. The committee reviewed a draft of the agenda for the January board meeting, which is considered our official reorganization meeting. The district has also been looking, uh, has been exploring composting. Um, one option for our food service is to start using compostable materials, but in order to do that, there needs to be a place that will process the compost. Princeton University recently re requested a commitment from us for the local share of the grant if the university is successful in obtaining a grant to develop a composting facility, and at this point, we're in. Um, that kind of covers it. Are there any questions about the finance item? All right, that moves us uh, now to the voting portion of our meeting. Uh, we're gonna start with administration items one through eight. I need to make one uh, addition though. On item number two, we need to add in the following student number, VES1217190018. So with that addition to number two, could I please get a motion on items one through eight? Tony and Martin. Are there any questions on the administration items? Okay, could I start with Mr. Chang, please? Yes. Mr. Flares? Yes. Ms. Hertz? Yes. Ms. Ho? Yes. Ms. Krug? Yes. Mr. Whitfield? Yes. Mr. Zhang? Yes. Ms. Juliana? Yes. Ms. Keish? Yes. Can I please get a motion on the curriculum items one through six? Dana and Carol. Are there any questions on the curriculum items? Okay, can I start with Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Hertz? Okay. Uh, next is Ms. Ho. Yes. Ms. Krug? Yes. Mr. Whitfield? Yes. Mr. Zhang? Mr. Chang? Yes. Ms. Juliana? Yes. Ms. Keish? Yes. Okay. Can we please get a motion on the finance items 1 through 16, plus the purple addendum, I'm sorry, the purple substitution, and the blue addendum? Louisa and Taylor. Are there any questions on the finance items? Okay, we'll start with Ms. Hertz. Ms. Ho? Yes. Ms. Krug? Yes. Mr. Whitfield? Yes. Mr. Zhang? Yes. Mr. Chang? Yes. Mr. Flares? Yes. Ms. Juliana? Yes. Ms. Keish? Yes. Personnel items one and two plus the green addendum. I have, um, Madam Board President, I have to make one change. Okay. On the white personnel agenda under certificated staff on page one. There's an item for a uh, staff member, Shi Ding. Please omit that item. It's a magical item that just appeared suddenly from a previous agenda. That's incorrect. So with that correction, 
Can I please get a motion on items one and two plus the green addendum? Isaac and Rachel. Any questions? Okay, we'll start with Ms. Ho. Yes. Ms. Krug. Yes. Mr. Whitfield. Yes. Mr. Zhang. Yes. Mr. Chang. Yes. Mr. Flares. Yes. Ms. Hertz. Ms. Juliana. Yes. And Ms. Keish. Yes. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge some retirements that we just voted on. Kenneth Brzezinski, a health and PE teacher at Grover, is re retiring after 35 years in the district. Christina Charleston, a secretary at High School North, is retiring after 23 years in the district. Deborah Doolittle, a social studies teacher at Grover, uh, is retiring after 20 years. Janine Lang, a basic skills math teacher at Wyckoff, is retiring after 22 years. And Nancy Wilson, an occupational therapist, is retiring after 15 and a half years. I would like to wish them all the best in their retirement and thank them for their commitment to our students. Could I please get a motion to approve the minutes from December 17th, Taylor and Martin? All those in favor? What did I say? November 19th. I'm sorry, what did I say? November. November 19th. Sorry. <laughs> okay. We didn't have a meeting on December 19th. Okay. <laughs> Taylor and Martin meant to say, want to do it for November. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed or abstentions? What? Do we have any liaison reports? Do we have any new business? I have a, something I'd like to say. Um, in the interest of openness and transparency, members of the public should be allowed in committee meetings. And the policy 155 states, meetings of standing committees shall be called by the chair as needed and shall be open to the public with the understanding that the committee chair may choose to move to a closed session and thus work with no public in attendance. So the policy does allow members of the public to attend committee meetings, and it says nothing about li limiting the number of members of the public who could attend those meetings. So I guess it's the chairs of the committees who. Carolyn, I'm going to have to look that up, but I believe you're looking at the, the bylaw from 2000. I'm, this was on the website in the policy? Right, under the, there's a new section. There's a new one? Section Okay. 2012, I believe, 2014. 2014. Okay. I think it was 2012. It right now. Um, so it's it just hasn't been updated on the website, is it? No, there's two sections of the website as the policy has been being updated for years. Okay. So working to get there. Just for clarification, on the website under uh, policy manual, there's a a tab that says new policies. I th I don't think the other tab says old. It's, it's about, it's, it's under about us. Right. Can you speak into the mic, please? I'm multitasking. There's a section that says about us, and then under that, there's a section that says policy manual. When you click into the policy manual, um, there is five drop-down tabs, policy manual, regulation manual, then there's new policies, new regulations, and then the complaint policy. Anything that's been updated from the original policy manual that's posted is under the section of new policies. Bylaws fall under the idea of uh, area of policies. So we'd have to go to the uh, new policy section, to the approved policies, and then if we go to section 0000 bylaws, we flip to that, and if we go to the requisite section that Carol referenced, and Carol, forgive me, was that 0151? 155. Okay, so that was, uh, I'm just working to get there. I didn't bring my computer. Uh, 0155 board committees. Yes. And, all right, anyone better vision than me, but. Is there a statement on the website that explains that you have to look at the new policy section for the most 
recent stuff. Committee meeting, forgive me, Louise, I just want to read the section and then I'll answer that. Committee meeting shall not be open to the public except that a majority of the committee or the chairperson may open the meeting to the public or invite persons where, uh, whose knowledge uh, or expertise be useful to the committee. So in other words, the committee has the right to invite guests. The committee could hear a specific, um, a specific issue that's been uh, raised um, and, and invite a group in. We've done that over time with respect to field lights. We've done that with respect to building use policies. We've had scouts in. Those were invited guests. That was approved in 2010, um, November 2010. So this has been the policy for the last nine years of this board. And as far as the statement that you made, Louisa, um, there is no outright statement on the website underneath the, the section of policies that I can see. Other than that, there's five drop downs. Dr. Adderhold, there is a policy statement right on the front page. It does say on the or under policies uh, and regulations. No, the, there's a note. On the Thank note. you. Thank you. There is actually. It, it fully explains it. Thank you, Jerry. I was in the wrong section. The website on the phone is different than the website. So if parents want to attend the uh, committee meeting, they no. have to apply. No, there's no application. If there's a, a committee topic that's being, um, um, that someone wants to bring forward, they can make a request. That's not the, the work of the board. It's not intended to be a public, it's a work session based on agenda items created between the chair and the assistant superintendent, the super, assistant superintendent that direct, is the direct liaison and the superintendent. Mm -hmm. That is the way our board has worked. Um, that's been the history of the board for long before I got here. Um, again, that policy was updated in 2010, but with respect to the committee structure. And that's a very standard way the boards of education work. Okay, the t West Windsor Town Council does allow the public in their committee meeting. We're not the town council. I understand that. But the it town council is available on Monday nights, I believe. Yeah. Um, during the fall campaign, I spoke to a lot of parents and they asked some questions. And I was wondering if you could answer a few of those for me. Um, a lot of parents said that their teachers seem to have been told not to give homework in the elementary grades or in sixth grade, and there's been no homework K through six. Was that the elementary grades or sixth grade specifically? K, K through six. Their children have had no homework for six years. And I find wondering. that extremely hard to believe. Well, a lot of different parents have said this. There's been no homework in elementary grades. Just wanted to clarify, who did they say that to? To me. On the campaign? Yeah, when I was knocking on doors. Got it. Yeah. Do you have an explanation for that, or why would that? Oh, no, happen? I was going to wait for the other 10. You want me to go through all the questions? I would love for you to. OK, well, I'm not going to go through 10 of them. 11 of them. Um, also, what apps are being used in the schools, it's, and is the children's privacy protected? Is the information gathered put in a cloud or, or not? It is put in a cloud? Oh, or no, you're not no, going to answer? I, I'm okay. acknowledging the question. Oh, OK, OK. A parent checked with uh, parents in Village and Millstone River. And in fifth grade, there seems to be no clustering in math, no enrichment, no differentiation. This was promised when they cut A&E math. Why is this happening? How can parents review teachers? Communication could be improved. I shouldn't have to click three times to find something on the website. I want to know dates of BOE meetings, agendas, and PTA meetings without having to click many times. And here's the last question. My daughter has a food allergy. Uh, the students need to be taught in health class about food allergies. She was bullied throughout school and taunted. And students should learn about degrees of the allergic response and how dangerous allergies can be and how they have to be treated and have empathy for kids with these issues and not bully the kids who have food allergies. Could there you, other? Yeah, that's all. So, so just for the, the, the uh, how did I know 11? So yesterday I received an email letting me know that these issues would be raised. Um, just for full transparency, since we're being transparent, 
These are the identical list of questions that were sent to me on um, October, uh, was it October 15th at two, two o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, the identical list that I responded to on October 18th at 1.15. Um, and, and as I stated then, and I'll state again now, uh, I appreciate your feedback and for your willingness to bring questions to, and I say the same thing to any member of the board that wishes to raise issues of things brought forward by the parent. Specifically ask the parent to contact the administration. Right? There, is, there is a process by which we follow when someone raises something of concern. You state lots of things in your email of apparent quotes, but since October 18th, when I sent the response to you, not once have I received an email from any parent regarding any concern that you raised. So I'm not sure if these issues are real, if they exist, if they're one person's opinion. Um, you know, for instance, one of the ones that you wrote was um, specifically to our science department. High school teachers are not teaching science. Why? I think the question there is why, the rest of it's a statement. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not sure what empirical evidence that we have that we have a problem in our science department um, besides our outstanding uh, scores and our students' incredible academics and our AP scores and our STEM scores and being two in the top 125 in the nation. Um, but I regret uh, yeah. So with respect to the thing, I thank you for your feedback. I encourage you. I wrote that you should specifically write to the parents encouraging them to speak to their child's teacher. If there's a question about the homework, there is no blanket statement on homework that's gone on other than the board approved homework policy that was passed approximately two years ago now that was sent out at the time in what I wrote in the email by, by Mr. Smith, our assistant superintendent at the time, after working for two and a half years with the committee of staff. I believe the link is still on the website with some of the feedback proposals to the community asking for, for feedback on the policy. I believe we received one. <coughs> Parents should contact their teachers, their, their children's teacher if there's a concern. It's exactly what I wrote you in October. If they is not, do not have a satisfactory, satisfactory answer, then they should reach out to the building administration and or the department supervisor responsible for that area. There's then a chain of command depending on the totality of issues. Sometimes an issue might go to Dr. Nathan, sometimes to Mr. Earl, sometimes to Dr. Russo, sometimes to myself, and sometimes there's other individuals on, under, underneath this sort of chain of command. Uh, Dr. McDonald, for instance, might get involved. Um, but when you say like the apps, there is a specific policy around acceptable use that parents sign um, that talks about the technologies that are utilized. Um, there are um, signs in classrooms around food allergens and students in classrooms around food allergens do receive uh, a knowledge or, or training or a, depending on the level of the food allergy. There's also um, medical privacy, so depending on the circumstances. It's not as easy to answer these questions as just a blanket statement taken out of context, lifted from an email, lifted from a side conversation, or in a McCaffrey's or a parking lot. So without context, I can't really answer it. So I really would have appreciated that the parents that went to you ultimately came, you went back to them to then send them forward to us. That didn't happen. And if it did happen, um, not one felt that the issue was such that they should reach out to us. Regarding homework, you've raised that we multiple times in multiple settings. We do not have an opposition to homework. We have a policy that talks about a respectful balance at appropriate grade levels. And at the secondary level, it's pretty much assign homework. Um, but we do look for a, a moderate amount of homework um, at the elementary and middle school. If someone has gone K-6 and not received homework, I find that in absolutely not believable in this district, that that's, uh, that that's possible. Um, and the, one of the statements in here was about guidance. You didn't read it out loud, but it said that a junior or a senior was, a, was assigned a new guidance counselor um, that wasn't able to do college apps. Well, we've assigned no seniors to any new counselors, specifically so college apps weren't impacted. That was specifically designed by our lead counselors and our director of counseling and our high school administration to ensure that that didn't happen. So it's just, it's misleading statement after misleading statement and since two months since I responded to you, not one person has come back forward to me. So, I mean, we can keep going rounds with this, but I have nothing else to say. Thank you for answering those questions. 
I think it's helpful for parents to hear what the process is and what they should do and what the procedure is and how they should go about talking to their teacher or principal or, or a supervisor in some cases. Um, the other, there is one other thing I wanted to comment about. Uh, the other thing I found out while I was campaigning is that a lot of people feel taxes are too high. Uh, people who rent here told me they will not buy here because taxes are too high. One homeowner said her children graduated years ago and she's paying higher taxes every year with no kids in the schools. A man told me he now pays more taxes in every year than he paid to purchase his home. Another man had tears in his eyes as he asked, why are taxes so high? Tony Flores has told us that when High School North and Grover were built many years ago, taxes did not go up because the new residents had already moved in and were paying their share. That Board of Ed was responsible and careful about raising taxes. Now we have no new housing's been built yet, but we're already hiring new people to staff the, the new buildings that are being built. People cannot afford these taxes. The other problem that's arisen is that property values are going down. The high taxes are affecting property values of every resident all over town. Property values are dropping. My house has dropped in value by more than $100,000 over the last five years. All of your homes who are homeowners have also lost value. This is sickening. Yet this board votes for the budget and tax increases, increases every year. I know of two cases where young families were advised not to move to West Windsor because of the schools. They were advised by administrators in their hometowns. Cutting A&E math took away one special feature of WWP schools and clearly hurt the brightest students. The new elementary math pro program does not live up to what was promised, and sixth grade A&E math now is not as rigorous as what came before. Many parents put their children in private schools or hired private tutors. Many other parents moved out of town because of the elimination of A&E math, and others will not look for a home in West Windsor because of this. No one has forgotten that final exams were also eliminated. There was no mandate in the election results in West Windsor. The vote was very close. Nearly half the town disagrees with the continual tax increases and the curriculum changes. I think this board should think about that carefully. That brings us to our second opportunity for public comment. 15 minutes will be provided at the end of our meeting for public comment. Each participant is asked to give his or her name and address prior to making a statement, which will be limited to three minutes. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. Hello, I'm Andrew Bean, and I'm the math supervisor for grade 6 through 12 for the district. Um, I just wanted to address Carol about the A&E math. Um, we did not eliminate A&E math. We have H&A &A math. It is um, a rename. We renamed A&E H&A &A so that it would match the high school course and let parents know exactly what the sequence of courses would be. As for the sixth grade math course not being as rigorous, I disagree wholeheartedly with that. We use the same curriculum. We have several of the same teachers. Those children have gone on to Algebra I just as they used to when it was A and E. They took Algebra I in seventh grade. And right now, we don't have any children in seventh grade, Algebra I not doing well. So clearly, they were prepared in the sixth grade class. It was rigorous enough for them to take on Algebra One. We are fortunate to have super dedicated teachers who have worked really hard to write the curriculum, maintain the standards, and work with the children. Um, I personally am insulted when parents uh, insinuate that we are watering down the program because we let more students in. We know we weren't identifying the students properly. We fixed it. We allowed more capable students to learn more math. And to us, that's what's important, and that's what the teachers are working hard for. So I just couldn't let that public statement go un unremarked on. So thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, good evening, my name is Bruce Samastrelli. I'm the president of the teachers union and I thank Andrea for her comments about my colleagues. I want to take a moment to uh, share that I meet with many, many people throughout the state and one of the things that I constantly come back and, and say to myself and say to my colleagues is that this is a good place to be. This is a good place to be. Um, I want to take a moment and thank those uh, members of the board and, and administration who were able to join us on the 6th of December for a very, very fine evening. On that evening, uh, we feted um, four friends of education from Mercer County. One was uh, Bonnie Watson Coleman. One group were firefighters from, um, um, from Hamilton. Uh, a uh, gentleman from Trenton who takes uh, who helped, helped shepherd students in the college process, and the fourth one was Dave Adderold. And, and that night, I, when, I, when I spoke to the audience, one of the things that I said was one of the parts of the definition of friend is one that favors or promotes something. And for those of you there that night, know that that was the gist of my comments about Dr. Adderold. I believe time and time again, Dr. Adderold has shown his concern for the promotion of an education that goes above the state mandated, thorough, and efficient. Dr. Adold's vision, I think, supported by the staff, is for an education ensure, that ensures students become globally aware, are prepared for the future, and have as many educational opportunities that they can, and most importantly, all done in the lens of social and emotional wellness. So I think with this in mind, through the years, Dave, you've created an educational friendship amongst the stakeholders in our local community. I mean, just that night, talking with board members and, and community members and administrators and teachers shows that, and I think you've had an impact on other districts in the county. I think of what a true promoter of education does, what a true friend does, is bring people together. And bringing people together isn't always easy. It can be hard whether you've given your time implementing a strategic district goal with lots of staff working on that, shepherding facility improvements over the years, encouraging student health and well-being through perspective changes of their academic choices, and support student-centered learning that help, has helped me become a better educator. I think it shows the, why this is a good place to be. I think giving, shepherding, encouraging, supporting, and creating isn't that what our promoter of education does? Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Uh, before we get a motion to adjourn, I just uh, this is our last meeting of the of 2019. So I want to wish everybody a happy New Year. But that means that um, there are a couple people at our table tonight. Uh, where this is their last meeting, so I would like to please ask everyone to join me in a round of applause to acknowledge the years of service of uh, Taylor Zhang and Carol Hertz. And with that, I need a motion to adjourn. Carol and Taylor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Anybody want to stay? Okay. So thank you very much. We'll see you next year. <laughs>